Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone, uh, especially our guests, and I know for certain we have some. We had a couple of new guests in our Sunday school class this morning, which is always nice to have. So uh, you see somebody you don't know, t tell them good morning and thank them for being here. And we hope that uh, all the guests will join us again and join us often. Um, at the end of each pew, there's a black friendship book. We ask that you, the one on the middle aisle here, pass it to the outside so that everybody can sign it. And we'll let, that lets us know who and all was here, including the visitors. Um, as usual, we'd ask that you read the bulletin. It's got a lot of information in it, and I'm not going to go over all of it, but I am going to make a special note to some of it. Uh, next Sunday is the first day of Daylight Savings Time. So remember, move your clock forward, spring forward. So you'll lose an hour of sleep uh, next Saturday night. But set your clock uh, beforehand, and then we'll see you at church, not after church. Uh, um, also, the uh, church council uh, is scheduled to meet next Sunday the 10th. We are moving that to Sunday the 17th, same time. Uh, it'll be in the youth building, but it'll be at 7 o'clock uh, on Sunday the 17th for the church council. Um, we have this week the Lenten services on Wednesday. Uh, we're at 6 o'clock, a bit of supper, and at 7 we have Bible study, so please come and join us there. We need volunteers for the annual Habitat for House. Uh, that will be on Saturday, March the 16th. Uh, anyone either 16 or 18 above can actually do the work, but the younger ones can come and help with refreshments and all like that. Uh, but it's always a fun time. Uh, we've had good participation in years past. I'm sure we will this, this time. And anybody that wants to participate in that, please give me a call or just catch me in a hall or something, because we definitely need some, some additional people. Uh, it, the question was what we would we be doing? We'll be putting on vinyl siding just like we did last year. Okay? Uh, that's a pretty easy thing to do uh, versus putting floor joists and stuff like that. So uh, it's, a, it's a good one to come even if you're a little bit fearful of a hammer. Um, MDA. Uh, we got several events going on with the MDA on uh, Saturday, March the 9th, from 2 to 4, here at the church, there'll be a bike-a-thon. So these kids is coming by saying, will you sponsor them? Please be sure and do that. It's a pleasure to donate money to this organization. Uh, we also have uh, the Muscle Walk at Charlotte Motor Speedway on March the 17th, uh, 2 p.m. Okay. Uh, Anybody that needs information on that can see Mark Smith or Patrice. Uh, so uh, if you can attend that, that would be great. Which, by the way, if you look around and see all these green shirts, that's what that's about. Uh, today, right after the service, we're going to have a, 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 a soup luncheon, and we need lots of attendance. Uh, and during that time, there will be a silent auction for some cakes. Once again, this is a great cause. Please try not to go to a local restaurant today. Eat here. Right after service, you can go out this way and go right in and sit down and have a great meal. They've been working on it all morning. Um, also, uh, the History Channel, beginning today or tonight at 10 p.m., is going to be doing the first of a part series on the Bible. So we thought uh, that all of you might be interested in either recording it or watching it. But it'll be a continuation, and I understand it, uh, that it's been done in good fashion. So, um, any, any other, pardon? Is it at 8? Okay, I'd written down 10. Must be my mistake. Uh, so 8 o'clock tonight on the History Channel. Any other announcements? If not, I'll turn it over to Pastor Ken. Good morning, and the Lord be with you. And uh, also just a, a very warm welcome to all of our guests and uh, thank you Concordia for, uh, for making them feel welcome. 
Uh, I want to uh, say a welcome to all of the volunteers that are here from uh, Meals on Wheels, and we have a couple other special guests. We're going to take just a, a few brief moments to, uh, uh, to thank God for this special ministry. We're going to do that after the, uh, uh, the hymn following the sermon. We're going to take a few moments to, uh, uh, to recognize our volunteers and, and most of all to thank God for the way that he has uh, carried out this ministry uh, through uh, the people of this community. So we'll take a few moments later to do that, but welcome those who are here. And then one final announcement. Um, if um, Wednesday night, remember our Wednesday night gatherings are coming are coming forward. Um, this Wednesday night we have a meal at six and Bible study at seven, and uh, we'll get you home before bedtime. That's one of the best parts, uh, especially for old people like me that need to be in bed early. So, uh, but we hope that you will come and uh, just a wonderful way to share fellowship in the middle of the week. We're here for worship, so let us gather our hearts together in God's presence and make ourselves ready for worship. Let us stand for our confession and forgiveness. We gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, we come to the help of your come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin. Receive your forgiveness and grow 
into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. This morning there is good news that God who is rich in mercy loved us even when we were dead to sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, and comfort us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
I would like for all of our children to come forward and uh, help me with our children's message. Jesus loves me. Everybody, come on up if you need to, some folks in. How is everybody today? Everybody doing okay? You ready for a, a nice meal after, um, after church today? Yeah. All right. I need you to help remind me right before we do the benediction, I'm going to say a prayer, and we're going to bless the food. So, um, so if I happen to forget, somebody wave at me or something, okay? Close enough. That's good. You're in charge. All right. I have, I have a picture of a couple friends. You want to see them? All right, let's see. Uh, first picture is this. Yeah, that's my truck. It's truck. That's right. This is a, this is a, a truck that I'm driving. Does he have a red one like this? That's right. And in fact, what do we call this truck? Marvin. This is Marvin the truck. Yeah. This is Marvin the truck. This is my truck. Uh, this truck has a quarter of a million miles, miles on it. This this truck has so many miles on it it would equal the distance from the earth to the moon. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Now, this is a relatively new friend. Can I show you a picture of a very old friend? Yes, yes, yes. Look at this. This was, this was my very first car. Um, this is a 1973. Oh, that's right. 1973. It is a Pontiac Le Mans. It was brown. It was almost exactly like this. And I was in high school, I'd have the windows rolled down, my hair would be flapping in the breeze. And <laughs> I really had hair back then. I had so much it would flap, actually. But I look back at this, I look back at this old friend. This car was so dependable. This car never let me down. In fact, I, I really don't remember other than having to nurture it and care for it. I don't ever remember this car letting me down on the side of the road. This car was very, very dependable and it was very safe. And I like to look back and think about this car. And it reminds me of our psalm today. Our psalm, we have God's people God's people from a long time ago, the Israelites, do you know what they're doing in our psalm, Psalm 85? They're remembering. They are remembering everything that God has done for them. They are remembering that God has never let them down. They are remembering that God has done amazing things for them that they could not do for themselves. And they are remembering that God's love for them was unmatched in anything else they knew. They liked to go back and remember because they knew God never let them down. I want you to think about that, especially today. It's always good for you to think back about what God has done for you. So I want to give you a homework assignment. Today, sometime, I want you to ask your parents or your grandparents, and I want you to ask them about what it was like for them to go to church when they were young. What do they remember about the Bible, their Sunday school teachers? I bet you they can tell you stories going back about how wonderful things were and about how important their faith was. And that means a lot for us now. So whenever we face challenges, we always want to look back and remember that God loves us. We can rely on God and God will forever care for us. Okay? All right. Let us fold our hands and pray. Will you pray with us, please? Holy God, give us good memories. Give us good memories that we may always be able to look back into the history of our lives, into the history of your people, that we might be able to see how you have cared for us and how you have led us through many, many things. Give us a good memory, Lord, that we might remember all that you have done so that it will carry us today 
and carry us confidently into the future. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus, who died and rose again, that we might have a future. Amen. Thank you for coming up, and you may, you may go to Children's Church if you'd like. The Old Testament reading is from the 33rd chapter of Ezekiel. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade them from their ways. That wicked person will die from their sin. And I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person to turn from their ways and they do not do so, they will die for their sin, though you yourself will be saved. Son of man, say to the Israelites, this is what you are saying. Our offenses and sins weigh, weigh us down, and we are wasting away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? Therefore, son of man, say to your people, if someone who is righteous disobeys that person's former righteousness will count for nothing. And if someone who is wicked repents, that person's former wickedness will not bring condemnation. The righteous person who sins will not be allowed to live, even though they were formerly righteous. If I tell a righteous person that they will surely live, but then they trust in their righteousness and do evil. None of the righteous things that person has done will be remembered. They will die for the evil they have done. And if I say to a wicked person, you will surely die, but they then turn away from their sin and do what is just and right. If they give back what they took and pledge for a loan, return what they have stolen, follow the decrees that give life and do no evil, that person will surely live. They will not die. None of the sins that person has committed will be remembered against them. They have done what is just and right. They will surely live. Yet your per people say, the way of the Lord is not just, but it is their way that is not just. If a righteous person turns from their righteousness and does evil, they will die for it. <clears throat> and, and if a wicked person turns away from their wickedness and does what is just and right, they will live by doing so. Yet you Israelites say, the way of the Lord is not just, but I will judge each of you according to your own ways. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 85. You, Lord, showed your favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. And covered all their sins. You set aside all your raft. And Restore us again, God our Savior. And put away your Will you be angry with us forever? Will you not revive us again? That your people may rejoice in you. Show us your unfailing love, Lord. And grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He Surely his salvation is near those who fear him. Love and faithfulness meet together. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth. The Lord will indeed give what is good. Righteousness goes before him. Here ends the reading of the psalm. The New Testament reading is from the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food and drank all the, the same spiritual drink. 
for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to, to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to In our readings up till now, you have probably heard these words spoken over and over. Turn, repent, and return. That is the theme for today, and we hear that. We hear that summed up by Jesus. In our gospel reading, Jesus is in conversation um, and is in strong conversation with some opponents that are asking him about what the levels of sin are. And Jesus responds saying that all sin is of equal level but he calls us to return to him in every way. The Holy Gospel according to Luke 13, uh, Luke the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because the Galileans suffered in this way that they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who, will, who were killed when the tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were worse offenders than all the others living in the kingdom in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? And he replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not... You can cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you will, I'd like to ask you to, um, to go to page 3 in your bulletin. Psalm 85 is, will be the text, uh, the foundation of the message this morning. And I'd like uh, for you to have that in front of you so we can refer to it together. Let us pray. Pray. 
Holy God, it is good to be in this place because you are here. We ask that you will fill our hearts with your presence this morning. Fill our hearts with your truth that we might leave from here today nurtured and empowered to be your truth in this world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are in the midst of a restoration. That's what the husband and wife told the TV show producer as he came in through their door. They looked around again and held out their arms and pointed out to their house. They said, we are in the midst of a restoration. And they were. They had dropped cloths on the floor. People were painting. There was plastic over the door frames to keep the dust from going into other parts of the building. There were power tools. There were all kinds of activity. Trash over here, uh, what looked like trash over here, it was very, very clear that they were in the midst of a restoration. Is it me or is every show on television now either a house restoration or a cooking show? Is that just me? Maybe, all right, maybe I'm not watching the right channels. But that's, that's the way this particular show opened. They boldly proclaimed as soon as they opened the door to the visitor that they were in the midst of a restoration. And they probably did not need to say that because by all the sights and the sounds, it was very clear that they were. One of the fascinating things about our scripture reading today is that they are in the midst of a restoration. It is very clear there in the midst of a restoration. And what we hear in Psalm 85, we hear some amazing words from people just like you and I. They have come out of exile in Babylon, and they're really struggling to find their way. Just like someone that has maybe moved from one city to the next. They may have shelter over their heads, but they do not quite yet Things aren't unpacked. They're not quite sure where everything is, and the future looks uncertain. Well, in this psalm, how wonderful it is that in the first three verses, and I'd like for you to look at it with me. In the first three verses of this psalm, they're looking backwards. They're looking backwards. They're looking behind them. And, and follow along as I share some of this. The psalmist says, Lord, you showed your favor to the land. It's good to be in God's favor. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. Not only had they been run out of their, their homeland, but everything they had, their farm, their, their, their animals, all their possessions have been scattered and taken from them. Not only have they now been returned, but all has been returned to them. Verse 2, you forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all of their sins. In verse 3, you have set aside all of your wrath and you have turned from your fierce anger. So what we have here, we have a people in the midst of a restoration, but right now instead of looking forward, they're looking behind them. They're looking behind them to remind them of what God has done. And how powerful it is. But look at verses 4 through 7. They've looked back. They've remembered what God has done. And now they're in the present. They're believing in the now. You hear some of the phrases. They're asking God how long God will be angry. They're asking will God revive them again. So that they can rejoice. And you know doesn't that sound like every single crisis any one of us has ever been through? You ever been through a midst of a crisis or a situation that pops up or, or an ongoing problem that never seems to be, that never seems to correct itself? We ask what, what's often called those magic questions. How long? Why me? Why now? Why here? See, that's what we're finding in God's people. They're asking those questions. They're saying, Lord, restore us. How long is this going to take? Are you going to come around that we can see what your plans are? And they're struggling. 
But one thing that they know is that they are in the midst of a restoration. They are in the midst of a restoration, and that's why the psalm is so important to us. It speaks to who we are, and it speaks to where we are, because no matter where we are on this side of, of that joyous day when Jesus will return, we are in the midst of a restoration. And before we do anything, we have to go back and see what God has done. Remember the couple I was telling you about on the television show where they proclaimed to the producer and the show host that, that they were in the midst of a restoration. The show host asked them, because it was hard for him to visualize this house, which seemingly was gutted from the inside out, the host asked them a very important question. He said, do you have a picture of what this house looked like before it became, you know, before it, it really uh, became worse for the wear. And they said, we do. And they pulled out a picture and they held it up and they said, this is what the house used to look like. Beautiful, pristine, uh, Victorian, something that you could imagine what would be now in a historical district. They held up that picture and they said, this, this is what it once looked like. And you could see the TV show, uh, the, the, the TV host, you could see, just see his face. Wow, that is a beautiful house. You couldn't help but looking at the two pictures side by side and going, wow, that's wonderful. Oh, what a train wreck. You know, both of them side by side. But they had to go back to what it was so that they could move forward and remember and go forward in faith. And look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, I will listen to what the, uh, God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, and will not let them return to folly. Verse 9. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. They've been looking backwards, they were looking in the present, and now they're looking forward. But they're not looking forward with fear and trepidation. They're looking forward with confidence and hope because they know that God has cared for them, oh, these many years. And God has not let them down. And then hear these wonderfully sweet words about, and I say sweet in terms of that joyful recollection of God. Look at verse 10. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. They know that God will do exactly what God has promised, that God will care for them in ways that will be far beyond what they could care for themselves. And they know that they will be okay. It's easy for each of us to say that we are in the midst of a restoration, but we are. There are things around us that need to be restored. There are cars that many of us restore. Um, in my part of North Carolina and Catawba County, um, most everyone used to work in furniture. And everyone, it seemed, behind their house had a shop where they were, even, where they were either building furniture or more than likely they were restoring furniture. And everyone was always excited to show you what they were working on and what they hoped it would look like. But see, there's more restoration going on too. As we sit here today, there are those of us who are in the midst of restoring our health. There are those of us who are trying to restore relationships, trying to restore our career. They're trying to restore a lot of things about ourselves. And what we know is this. If we look backwards, we can see that God has kept his promises. And if we look backwards but not as far back, we, can, we see that God through Jesus Christ has said, let me show you an even greater promise. That through his death and resurrection, God has said, this will be your new life. This will be your forgiveness. This is my ultimate promise. And that's good news for us to hear because every single one of us is in the midst of or is in need of restoration of some kind. 
And when we are frustrated, when we are, when we have no other steps that we know to take, when we feel we are out of resources, we simply look no further than Christ. Where there is hope, there is a word of good news, and there is a word of promise. So how did the restoration, t- uh, how did the restoration turn out with that family? On that TV show, I don't know. I got bored. I turned the channel. It was just, it was too much for me to handle. And I think there was a basketball game on. But those shows always end the proper way and they always end the right way. They always end with the restoration complete. They always end with the couple and the family happy. And it usually looks better than it even did before. That's good hope to have. Nowhere else can we find that except in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. many joys to being a pastor. One of them is to see active ministry happening all around and being carried out by many folks. Um, And then another part of that is knowing that there is, uh, knowing that there are ministries that are ongoing that you never really hear about or, or see about, yet the depths of how they touch people and families is, is immense and wonderful. Um, We want to take just a moment to thank God for what he is doing through the Meals on Wheels ministry. And we have a couple special guests who are with us. And I would like to um, invite our volunteers forward uh, for just a moment of prayer and blessing and a a special presentation. So I'd like for you to come forward, please.
Joe Allen is our new coordinator of the Mills on Wheels from Concordia. He's not feeling well this morning, so I'm going to step in for him. Uh, we have Rita Sims here from the Mills on Wheels um, of Rowland, the director, and also Sandy Combs from um, the Mills on Wheels, a volunteer coordinator. Thank you for being with us today. Wayne McLaughlin made the first contact with Mills and Wheels of Rowan some 14 years ago and arranged the first organizational meeting. Some of our first servant volunteers were Wayne McLaughlin, Bob McLaughlin, Joe Baker, Paul Campbell, Helen Campbell, and Bob Levins. Kay Ritchie, our first Mills and Wheels coordinator and all who assisted her in the 14 years she served uh, as Mills on Wheels coordinator. It's Kay. Kay's already up here. Good. Our other regulars who assisted Kay in the past years were Phyllis McMurphy, Russell and Kathy Johnston, and David Fisher. The, mil the mission of Mills on Wheels for Rowan County is to provide a meal and friendly visit to the homebound of Rowan County. Thanks to these early servant volunteers, we have, over the past 14 years, delivered approximately 35,000 meals and friendly visits and driven approximately 70,000 miles. Give them a hand. <laughs> so today, we would like to recognize our current servant members um, Bob Levins, Sarah Brandt, David Fisher, Faye Hollick, Mel Hollick, Barbara Carricker, Furman Carricker, Bob Kerr, Colleen Kerr, Ron Kirk, Carolyn Michael, and Sherry Rice. Do we have any others out in the congregation that have helped? If you have, please stand. Let's give all these a hand. <laughs> now we want to thank Kay Ritchie for her 14 plus years of service and uh, I'll turn it over to Rita Sims, the coordinator. In Matthew, Chapter 25, verse 35, it says, For you were hungry, and you gave me something to eat. For I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. That is the mission of Meals on Wheels. Right now, we're delivering an average of 200 meals a day. We have 27 routes that run throughout Rowan County. We are very much dependent upon our volunteers and our churches and our coordinators. Without the coordinators, the volunteers, we would not be able to accomplish our mission. Now, it's not unusual for any of us in the office to deliver meals. One day, I found myself delivering a route in Salisbury. Now, I had heard the stories about delivering this route. There was a gentleman, a retired Baptist minister, and they said, now, when you go there, you're going to get a little sermon. I said, okay, that'll be fine. So this particular day, I go there and I knock on the door. Well, he immediately recognized, oh, it's Rita. So he talks to me a minute. Then he gets very serious, and he looks me straight in the eye, and he says, Rita, where is your church? I said, well, I go to Central Methodist in Spencer. He said, that's fine, Rita, but where is your church? Well, now I'm thinking, okay, he wants me to be a little more detailed. So I said, well, it's on the corner of 4th Street and Yadkin Avenue. He looked at me and he grinned and he said, Rita, your church is standing on my doorstep delivering me a meal. Your church is wherever you are. So, Monday through Friday, about lunchtime, I know where Concordia Lutheran Church is at. It's standing on the doorstep of a client on the Atwell route, delivering a meal. So today we're here to say thank you to you as a church for what you do, to all of your volunteers, but we need to say a special thank you to Kay Ritchie, so Kay, we want to present you certificate. Basically saying Kay coordinated from the very beginning 14 years. And that is amazing. I think you hold a record for coordinator. Thank you. And we have um, Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. And I 
don't think I'll be one of the other volunteers. I certainly didn't do this alone. It took a lot of a lot of people from the church all these years to accomplish this. And, and I feel like that we are, are serving God by doing this and helping these people. So thank, thank you. you That's much. wonderful. Thank you so much. As I know, this is my eighth year with Meals on Wheels. So Kay was there in the beginning for me. And um, she not only coordinated all the volunteers from your church, but she delivered every Monday as well. So thank you again. If you haven't had the opportunity to be a part of Meals on Wheels, give it great consideration. There's nothing that feels better than to go up to a doorstep with just a simple meal to hand to someone who otherwise wouldn't have that meal that day. And that feeling that they give back to you is just more than what you can share with someone else. Uh, Kay has done this for so long. I'm proud on behalf of Concordia Lutheran Church to present Kay with this certificate which reads, awarded to Kay Ritchie for 14 years as Concordia's Meals on Wheels coordinator, 1998 through 2012. That's a lot of years to have meals in her carport so that people can come and pick them up and deliver them to somebody else. And it was, they were always there, always there. And think about it, that takes a lot of effort for that many years to make sure those meals are already on hand for those who want to deliver them. Okay, I'm awful proud to give you this, and it may be a certificate, uh, something you can hang on the wall, but I want you to take this in recognition that this is from your church family for the thanks for what you've done over the last 14 years. Thank you. One day there will be others who will look back on our added efforts and think, I hope I can do as well as they. And they, we will do as well. They will do better and we can all be proud of our legacy of service at Concordia. This year in 2013, we will deliver approximately 2,500 me meals and drive approximately 5,000 miles. Thank you. Let us continue our worship and confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Amen. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for the opportunity and for the gifts that you give us for ministry. But Lord, it is not our ministry, it is yours. We thank you for the people at Mills on Wheels, for the planners, for the administrators, for those who provide funds for the special ministry. We ask that you will continue to raise up leaders for Mills on Wheels within our nation, within our community. And Lord, we thank you for every single ministry in this congregation and in this community. Continue to raise up good, faithful leaders, O Lord, and present us with opportunities to serve you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with our offering.
Let us stand. pray. Generous God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, our time, ourselves, and our possessions, all signs of your gracious love. Receive them for, receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Christ welcomes you to his holy table. Body of Christ, give me 
body of Christ can be given for you. No more of the body of Christ can be given for you. The body of Christ can be given for you. Thank you. 
sacrifice that's given for you. On the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ Christ.
Let us stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen each of you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your son as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Invited to share and uh, to share in the meal following the service. There's always a place at our table for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the meal that will be provided for us this afternoon, or for the meals that we'll be eating at home or or in other places. We give you thanks for what you give us to be sustained each and every day, and we thank you for the hands you have put in our place to prepare it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now go forth with this blessing, that may, the, that may the God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless each of you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Go forth in God's love to serve God and declare what He has done for you. We will. Thanks be to God. Amen.